This is a 1974 70 horsepower Johnson outboard with approximately 38 hours on it. Why is it back here you're asking? Well, fix the exhaust issue it was having, put it in the water, in the driveway, runs fantastic, no issues. Put it in the water, dies. Why? Don't know. But it's unfortunately a common enough uh, scenario with most boats and jet skis. Happens, happens a lot. And time to dig in and figure out why. What could it be? Like what normally would cause that? The, the list, the answer to that question is a long massive list. The list of things that couldn't be are shorter. You know, like, it could be anything. You, you don't know. So I just test it and until you can figure out what it was. Now we do know the carburetors were last rebuilt just shy of 50 years ago. So it's about due for carburetor uh, cleaning, which you should probably do anyway. But, I mean, with such low hours and such good condition, and you never know. It may be fine. I don't know. So we're going to check uh, spark, compression, and then we'll dig in a fuel. Now the bottom cylinder was ran with water. It might be a little lower than the rest. We'll see. All right, start button. What's your problem? Am I doing this right? I am not doing this right. In fact, that just caused a short to ground there on my switch. So I hooked it up wrong. Whoopsie. Okay, we're getting spark. Compression's just shy of 150. It'll run fine. Spark, 150. Spark, 150. We know our ignition is working. We know we have good enough compression. The next step would be fuel. What's wrong with our fuel system? Well, there's a very, 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 very good chance these carburetors have never been off, never been cleaned. So, there's a very, very good chance it's just dirty carburetors. Maybe an idle jet, maybe a main jet. Main jet, probably not. Never got to that point. Probably an idle circuit. Now, it has a fixed... It's got a fixed low-speed jet. So there's not, I can't just pop off these covers and adjust the jet. So our only next logical conclusion is we've got to clean the carburetors. It being its original build, chances are they need to be cleaned. Who knows? I really don't like the idea of taking apart the carburetors because they've never been messed with. They truly are how they're supposed to be. But there ain't nothing I can do got to take them apart. All right, we're going to take off one carburetor at a time. Well, I don't know if that's actually going to happen because the middle carburetor kind of ties all the parts together. That, that, that would be the ideal situation here. I'm not going to mess with any settings. Try not to mess with any spring clips. Nothing, nothing weird. Just take it off as perfect as I can. And get it back on the same way. The first thing I'm noticing is the uh, fuel line zip ties. They're just loose. Like the T that this goes into, which it basically just fell out of there. So. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're gonna have some gas in here. At least we should. If we don't, something's afoot. Yep, there goes the gas. I need a rag to put it under there. Bowl's coming right off. Not stuck. So it wasn't over torqued. I 
nice float. Bowl, yeah, not so nice. Not so nice at all. Let's get this plug out. Take a look at the idle jet. Gasket looks fine. Hmm. So there is our idle jet. We have a hole in it. See right through it. So idle jets doesn't look like an issue. Main jet, it is clogged completely. And now it's fine. <laughs> All right, so you can see the bottom of the bowl. Pile of muckus. That's what was in the jet. So, yeah. We're, uh, we're going to be cleaning all these. So, let me... Uh, So it works though, kind of. Yeah, it kind of works. The level looks uh, pretty, pretty spot on. It might be a little off, to be honest. So I mean, like it looks just a pinch high. But I mean, it's been running this way for, you know, however long. Maybe okay. Fuel line, I don't know why it's so loose, but it's pliable, but it's also, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty done for. So I guess I'll be replacing those. So I got the middle one apart. The bowl looks pretty nice down inside of there. A little bit of, I don't know, whatever, but it doesn't have the gunk in it, but the jet well, it's clean now. I can see through it. But when I first got it out, I couldn't. <laughs> Yay. Well, anyway. Rest assured. Well, you can kind of see the hole, isn't Let me see if you can. You can tell there's something in there. But you couldn't see through it originally. Idle jet looks perfectly fine. The idle jet actually had more flow than the main jet. So, anyway. Clean this one up too. Left everything apart. Didn't take off the uh, plunger for the choke solenoid. Because then I gotta replace that tiny low ring, which means ordering parts. Takes longer, etc., etc., etc. Not much to report on the bottom carburetor. Just wanted to show you what the jets are like. So there is how it came out, and there is how it should look. So you can see what our cleanliness of our carburetor is like. So. Yeah, this needed to be done. Well, not much new to report yet. Pretty sure the problem is just those, those jets. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine now. Although it seemed fine before. Yeah, as long as I'm here changing out fuel hose, might as well check it all. See, this big one, it seems fine. It, it really does. It's got a plastic liner inside of there from here to here. So it's probably, well, I don't know where it ends, but it's that far from the end. So it it hasn't collapsed in on itself yet. Uh, it says 1974 on it. That's pretty hilarious. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I should change it just because this end is kind of oblonged. But I hate changing something that ain't broken, you know.
Yeah, it should work. I'll put the zip tie on after, just because I don't know if the uh, it's going to make too good of a bend. It looks like it will. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but I always leave them a little bit longer and trim them after. And in case I can't trim to the carb, I'll trim it there. But for now, that is fine. All right, carburetors are cleaned, put back together. The choke is working great now, by the way, because I cleaned that plunger too. So that little solenoid just, it's snappy. And look how bright the carburetors are. Came out pretty nice. Anyway, new fuel lines, clean carburetors. Eh, it should be fine. I'm gonna pump up the primer bulb, see if we're leaking fuel anywhere, hopefully not. All right, the fuel is on its way in. Well, primer bulb's nice and firm. Squeeze as hard as I can. Nothing's coming out. At least that I can see or smell, so. Fuel pressure test has passed. I am at the launch ramp. We are gonna see how this goes. Now, she said if this doesn't go okay to just pull the plug. I don't know if that means the metaphorical plug of fixing the boat or the actual, you know, drain plug. Given how this has gone for us so far, neither would surprise me. All right, well, we're in the water, so let's see what happens. Fuel line's probably connected and probably primed. Let's give it some warm up lever. Yeah, not bad. Get some choke. Pilot audience, the uh, miles per hour we're doing 17 right now, according to the gauge. That's kind of funny.
hours was a bit much. I put you below the window, the windshield. idling at less than zero RPM. <laughs> wonder if that's ever worked. A little windy today, but not bad. My friend's wife doesn't like coming to the river because the water's too dirty. Now we're, we're in the marina right now. And yeah, it's not much marina, but it's still a marina. Now marinas are known for having the dirty water. <laughs> I mean, look at this stuff. It is clear, clean water. Like, there's no, there's no green in there. I don't know, just, it's baffling. This guy better not take my ramp, you know what I'm saying? Well. Bringing the thing to her houseboat. She's down there somewhere. I really don't like this launch ramp. It doesn't. It doesn't drop off. So you just have this long, not very steep at all launch ramp. I mean, it's good for the Ranger since it's a you know weak mini truck, but it, you got to get so deep in the water before the boat starts floating off. It's pretty pretty annoying. <laughs> 948 right now. Hurricane Hillary is headed and it's going to strengthen before it gets there. Right now, still a category one storm. We got our Hurricane Hillary will tear up the west side of the state, dropping 10 inches or more in some places. Catastrophic rainfall, historic flooding, and dangerous mudslides. Chief, I'm really sorry to interrupt you right now. Uh, our, our studio is shaking right now, so not only are we dealing with a tropical storm, but it appears we are now dealing with an earthquake. Nah, it'll be fine. I don't know. I'm a little worried about the storm that's coming until, you know, I looked outside. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. All right, there's one YouTube comment I want to address. I got a print out here. Uh, it says they can't even repair their own engine and they're out there on the water. I, I get where you're coming from. I really do. The problem is you are looking at this all wrong. Let's go to an automotive world. Let's hop on the highway in a major city. Most of the people on that highway driving those cars have no clue how to fix their car. If some of them know how to change a tire, you're probably doing pretty well. It's just, that's the reality of things. Not everybody is skilled with engines and know how to fix them. They may understand how they work, but fixing them, a different, different story. So... When you come across people like that, don't hold it against them because it's really not for everybody. Not everybody knows how to do that. And not everybody wants to do that. You know, they'd rather, they'd rather pay somebody to do it than go through the effort to try to fix it themselves. It may not be the effort. It could be the time. It could be the cost of tools. Because let's, let's be honest, what I charge her is probably less than she would have spent on the uh, torque wrenches and tools to do it herself. So when you consider things like that, it makes sense. So I don't think repairing it should be what you're focusing on. What you should, since we're talking about a boat, I think what you should be focusing on is the safety aspect of it. If she understands the safety of the boat and mostly even how to operate it, she'll be fine. Now, when I'm talking safety, I'm first of all talking about life jackets, but not only life jackets, knowing that you can't put 50 people in that boat and expect it to, you know, be safe. You know, there's there's an occupancy level or a, a weight limit on that thing, and I'm sure she understands that. I know she understands a lot of the life jackets, because when I told her I'd like to take it to the water and test it, she said, make sure you bring your life jacket, because there's probably nothing in there. So I know she gets that, you know, does know how to fix it, fine. No problem. Like my, uh, the, uh, like my lady. She has no clue how to change a tire or do anything to that car. 
But she doesn't need to. A, she's got me. B, she's got a credit card. If something happens, she can get a tow truck. You know, it's not... You can make do without having that ability. But like I said, safety. She's not going to cram 18 people into the trunk of that car. Safe operation and operation. Other than that, she'll be doing fine. As time goes on, she'll more she uses the boat, she'll learn more about towing, more about safe retrieving and launching, you know, light inspections, trailer chains, all that stuff I'm sure she's going to learn along the way. But repairing it isn't something that she needs to know, and I wouldn't fault her or anybody for not knowing how to repair their boat. I make YouTube videos because I want to give people the confidence and the ability to be able to fix their engines because I know in most parts of the country and or world, you're not going to find somebody to fix these old clunkers. It just doesn't happen. And I think there's still good engines that can still be used by a lot of people with just a little bit of work. And a lot of the, I think anyway, a lot of the people who watch my videos want to learn how to work on their own motor. They probably do. And they're out there having, enjoying themselves with a little bit more ability in how to fix their motor. My videos aren't perfect, but there's something. Now, I know how to drive a manual trans. I've been doing it for many, many years. But I guarantee you, if you show a manual trans to, let's say, most people under 25, maybe four out of 100 are going to know how to work that thing. Just... The new new age of drivers, manual trans, they have no clue what they're doing. But throw me into a planetary type transmission, I'm going to have no clue how to shift that thing. Granted, I'll figure it out, but I'm not going to know when you first throw me in there. That's the same concept with what we're talking about here. She'll figure it out as time goes on. Like, commercial airline pilots... You know, do you think they're out there monitoring the combustion temperature of a Pratt & Whitney... JT90-3? Okay, well, they are, actually. But I can almost guarantee you, they don't know how to repair that engine. On a side note, you ever seen that movie Idiocracy? I, I think that movie is slowly becoming a reality. I have a folder in my, uh, my hard drive entitled We Are Getting Dumber, where I save all the examples of how society as a whole is learning how to do things less and less, and being... I don't know, less aware, I guess you could say. I'll show you an example here in a minute. But I first noticed it when I went to a Chase ATM, which I don't normally go to. But I went to the Chase ATM, and they had a new fancy ATM there. And I, they had pictures of, like, cash and then a little arrow and then your hand. And that's withdrawal cash. And then to deposit, there's a picture of a hand, a little arrow, and a little ATM machine. I saw that, and I was dumbfounded. Like, are you kidding me? Like, th that's what we're coming to now? Uh, I don't know. I saw a uh, insurance commercial where they're showing off their app. And it's like, you know, different problems you may have. And the lady's scrolling and I notice on the, the insurance app, there's a picture of like a crashed front end of a car. And then another picture of I don't remember what. And then the picture she clicked on was like a tire, but it was like jagged on the bottom like a flat tire. And you would push that picture to file your, I don't know, flat tire tow truck signal i don't know what it does but it's just it's just pictures you know like i it's baffling i think that's where we're headed let me show you the example before i go so i put uh amazon affiliate links in some of my uh videos if i use a product i can then link to the product and if it sells i will get a percentage of the sales commission that amazon collects it's just a way for me to rack in that sweet, sweet pocket change every month. Anyway, I was doing something and this popped up. So it says, I, you probably can't see it because of the quality of the photo. But based on my overall experience, I would rate my satisfaction as a creator on Amazon as, and then I have, I mean, look at this. It's smiley faces. You know, I don't need pictures of smiley faces to give a rating. Like, how dumb does Amazon think I am? But it's not, they're not gearing it towards me. They're gearing it towards, you know, everybody. I don't believe that everybody needs smiley faces as, as, you know, feedback. This is just silly to me. And after I, like I said, after I saw that Chase ATM, I started seeing this more and more everywhere. So this is what you can sh should be concerned about. This is the downfall of our society right here. All right, everybody. See you later.